For number 10, we are told that a long solenoid has 150 turns per centimeter and carries a current I. We're not given I, but it, we know it carries a current. An electron moves within the solenoid in a circle of radius 2.64 centimeters perpendicular to the solenoid axis. The speed of an electron is given as 0.0521c, c being the speed of light, and that equals to 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. We are asked to find the coronoid. We're asked to find the current of our solenoid. So to do this, we should first write down all of the values that were given, and then we can quickly sketch a circle that will represent our solenoid. So we have our solenoid here, we have the middle axis here, and we are going to have the radius like this. Our electron is going around the outside, so we could have this as our electron, and it is going around this way. We need to find the current, and to find the current, we are going to use the magnetic field formula. And that's going to be that B is equal to U0 times N times the current, which is I. This is the formula for the magnetic field on a solenoid, so we can say that this is B subscript S. We can rewrite this since we need to find our I, that our B of S is being divided by our U0 times N, and this is equal to I. We know our U0 because that's constant. We have the number of turns, which is 500. However, we don't know B of S. So we're going to have to find B of S. And the way we can find B of S is by using another formula, and that is that force is equal to charge times velocity times B. We are given our charge, the charge of the electron. We know the charge of the electron. We are given the velocity, but we don't know the B or the F. So we have two unknowns. We can also use the formula for force where we have mass times velocity squared divided by R distance. We have the mass of an electron, the velocity, and we know the radius. So from here, we're just going to focus on these two things. We can rewrite this equation so that our B is by itself. We'll write this as our B of S, and that's going to be equal to our mass times velocity squared divided by our R times Q times V. Our Vs are going to cancel, so this V and this V, and we can again rewrite this as this and then plug in our values. The mass of an electron is known to be 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms. We are then multiplying this by our velocity, which we are given as 0.0521. And this is being multiplied by the speed of light, which is 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. In our numerator, we're gonna have our radius, which we were given as 2.64 centimeters, or we can say 2.64 times 10 to the negative 2 meters, and this is being multiplied by the charge of an electron. And we know the charge of an electron to be 1.6 times 10 to the 19th coulombs. And we're going to get that our B of S is approximately equal to 3.35 times 10 to the negative 3 teslas. That is our B. Now we can take this and plug it back in here. So on our numerator now we're going to have 3.35 times 10 to the negative 3 teslas and this is being divided by our u naught which is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 tesla meters over amps and this is being multiplied by our number of turns and our number of turns given here is 150 and we have to convert this to meters so it's actually going to be 150 times 1 over 10 to the negative 2 turns. And it's 1 over 10 to the negative 2 and not just 10 to the negative 2 because we have turns per meter. And this is going to be equal to our i. And after we carefully plug all of this into our calculator, we are going to get that our i is equal to approximately 0 0.18 amps. And that is the work and answer for number 10.